Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm covering Herbaceous, a 1-4 to four player game that plays in roughly 20 minutes that is all about trying to pot your herbs. This is a game where you're effectively going to be pushing your luck as you slowly but surely plant your various... Uh, herbs in your garden, either your private garden or the public garden, and then slowly but surely pot them to fulfill different scoring requirements. I'm going to go into a brief how you play, or a brief uh, overview as well as a few rounds, and then from there I'll go into my review and final thoughts. So in Herbaceous, the ultimate point of the game is you're going to go through this deck of cards, and when this deck of cards is done, that's basically it. The game is over at that point. You'll finish potting your various herbs, and then call it a day. Now specifically, the way it works is each player has these different herb pots you're going to be utilizing, and each one can be utilized once each game. And those pots are this one, this pot, can hold one of each different herb. There's seven different herbs plus some special ones. You can only hold the regular herbs in this pot. And depending on how many herbs you hold, you'll get that many points. So for instance, if you get all seven different herbs, you'll get 14 points. Uh, this pot will hold, hold herbs that are the same. And if you get seven of the same, that's 22 points. This pot will hold pairs of herbs. And while you could technically have up to 14, it only will really score you up to 12. So six different pairs will hold, will get you up to 18 points. And then finally, the last pot will score three, any, any three cards go into the last pot. Plus, this is the only pot that can actually hold these special herbs, which will give you additional bonus points. And those are the four cards you have, the four pots you have. You're going to use them all once each game, and that's it. And the question that you always have to ask yourself is not like when you'll use it. Well, sorry, it's not if you'll use it, but rather when you use those cards. And so I've set up a, a basic state here on the table in order to just go through a few turns. But the basic sequence of play is at the beginning of your turn is when you have an opportunity to look at the cards on the table, both in the, per in the public garden as well as your private garden and then potentially pot those herbs. Or after that, once you're done with that, that's optional. You then move from there to drawing cards and your first card drawn you can put in either spot. Your second card drawn has to go in the other spot, whichever one you did. So I'm just going to go through a few sample turns and we'll go from there. Uh, let's just call these people uh, Peter and Paula. Let's go with Peter and Paula over here. So Peter over here is going to draw a card. We'll make Peter blue, go with gender norms or whatnot. Peter blue, Paula pink. Peter's going to draw a card, look at it, and he's going to... He's going to keep, hmm, I think we're going to dump the dill in the middle, actually. And then the second card we'll pick is going to be a uh, chive. Okay, great. So we'll keep the chive. We'll go to Paula's turn. Paula's going to look at the board. And Paula's actually looking at the fact that it looks like Paula can get a few pairs. So Paula's going to start by potting. She's going to grab the bay, the sage, the dill, now that it's been added to the board. Uh, the lavender, she's going to combine it with her own. That's so for four pairs. The tarragon. And can we get anything else? We can also get saffron. Wow, so that was actually a pretty good turn for Paula. That was six pairs. Uh, Peter probably should have been paying more attention. So that six pairs is going to go into her pot, and she's going to put that off. Her pear pot is gone. Now it's back to, now she's going to draw cards. She's going to add more cards to the board. She's going to take the rosemary. She's going to keep, no, she's going to ditch the rosemary because she already has a rosemary. And she's going to keep the lavender. Uh, Peter's going to go again. Peter's going to look at the board. He has one, two, three, four possible, five possible cards he's going to draw. And he's going to take the tarragon. He's going to add it to the middle. And he's going to take this one over here, the rosemary, and keep the rosemary, I guess. Uh, then Paula's going to go. Paula's going to grab these cards and put the lavender. So Paula doesn't want to add the lavender to the middle, but also doesn't want the lavender for it. You know what? Paula's going to keep the lavender. And then at the end of the day, put the dill in the middle. Uh, now it's Peter's turn. Peter's going to look back at these cards, and Peter's going to go for a set of different cards. He's going to take Rosemary. He's going to go for a potting action. Rosemary, Tarragon, Lavender, Bay. And in fact, we'll actually take the Rosemary and the Bay from the middle. No reason not to. And then from there, we'll take the Dill. And that will give us five of a kind over there, which we're going to put into our pot. We're going to put into our different kinds pot. And there we go. We've now done with that. And we'll go through another turn. We're taking the bay, and the bay, I think we will put the bay in the middle. No, actually, we're going to keep the bay, because we don't want to add another type that Peter, that Paula can get. And, nonetheless, bay's coming out. Uh, Paula's going to look at the board. She can get six different types, and I think she's going to go for those six different types right away. So, there's six different types into her different type spot, and Paula is basically killing it right now. Uh, we can keep going, but I'm actually going to stop here. But this is the idea of the game. That's the basic idea of the game, is you're constantly trying to go through the different cards, 
balance what your opponent has and what you have. Now, you didn't get an opportunity to see it in this slight back and forth because I don't want to go on too long, but the game can get particularly cutthroat, especially at two players, but even at three and four. You're constantly looking at what other players have before you make a decision because you're sitting there saying, well, if I add this to the middle, then that will incentivize someone else to grab them to complete a set. So I'll take this for myself and maybe I'll also pot something because if I wait, someone else is going to do something. You're going to constantly have players going, oh, when they realize that you took something just a turn before they were planning to do it. They waited, but they waited a bit too long and you got there first. Uh, that is basically uh, Horatius. You're going to continue doing that until all the cards are done. Then you'll continue going through rounds of consecutive potting until all the pots are filled or no one else can fill more pots. And then that will be the game. And so that's basically Herbaceous. And so my format in general is what I liked. I cover what I liked, what I didn't like, and what I can see others not liking about this game. And then I go from there into my final thoughts. And so for what I liked, it's pretty simple for me personally. First of all, I like the push your luck mechanism in this game. And I like it specifically in the way this game implements it. Meaning I like push your luck in general in all games, but I am a bigger fan of push your luck when it's done in a way in which you're pushing your luck against the other players rather than against the random draw. And so what I mean by that is like can't stop or Captain Cutlass, those Captain Carcass, those are games where you're pushing your luck against the random draw, versus I like games more like No Thanks or Welcome to the Dungeon or now Herbaceous, in which you are kind of pushing your luck against the other players. You're kind of trying to see how much you can eke out of a system while understanding that at a certain point, someone else is going to snap something up, or Colorado is another great game in that genre. And so I like to push your luck in Herbaceous. Uh, secondly, what I like about this game, and it ties into the first thing, it's mean. Particularly at two players, it's mean at all player counts to be clear, but particularly at two players, it is especially cutthroat as your actions in a two player game shift from being, you know, a little bit balancing what others are going to do. And in a two player game, it's all about the fact that every point you deny your opponent is another point that helps you. And so it really drives home those decisions because, I mean, some of those things like, like when you're potting your basic, uh, your basic pot over here, I don't remember what it's called, but when you're potting a basic pot where you can take three cards, I love cashing that card in a two player game just to deny three random cards in the middle usually you're trying to score the the extra bonus cards but in a two-player game you'll score anything if it denies your opponent points this game is particularly cutthroat at two players don't get me wrong it is still enjoyable at three and four as well but at two players i I, I guess to put it differently, we'll get to this in my final thoughts but at three or four players i was like this is a good game i don't know if i need to own it but i like it and at two players i was like i really I, I really enjoy the Scrooge that enters the game in a two-player game. And it, and it does all that in a 20-minute uh, timeline, which I guess my third pro, the third thing I like, is it really is pretty short. The game plays in between 15 to 25 minutes, and if you hit 25 minutes, you're probably playing it on the slow end or with people who are taking their, their moves a little slowly. This game moves along pretty quickly as you draw cards, you draw your plants, you plant them, one guard, and then you sweep them up, plant, plant, pot your plants... It moves along fairly quickly. The whole thing consistently wraps up in 15 to 20 minutes. Although, again, two players is my personal sweet spot, and we got a two-player game done in 10 minutes, which was great. As far as what I didn't like, because, I mean, this this is a small game, so my categories are a little smaller than usual. As far as what I didn't like, so there's really two things, and one of them I had to struggle to think through just for the sake of being critical to a degree. And I'm never critical for the sake of being critical, but I'll explain what I mean. Uh, so first of all is the art. The art in this game does not personally pull me in. I will give a very strong caveat there that my wife saw the game before even playing it said, ooh, it's pretty. Like, she really liked the art from the get-go. Uh, for me, I'm just not personally a fan. Uh, it's not bad. It's not... I mean, it's not bad, but it's not particularly good to me. The art style does not pull me in personally. In fact, I've avoided this game for a very long time, and the only reason I'm talking about it now is because of the current Kickstarter for Herbaceous Pocket Edition. Which brings me to my second con, which is... When I was looking at this game, I was thinking about the fact that while I do like it, especially in the two-player version, at any given point in my collection, all games are fighting for their spot on my shelf. And that made me think of the fact that this game is bigger than it needs to be, which brings us directly to that Herbaceous Pocket Edition I mentioned, which is Herbaceous Pocket Edition is basically the same game, but in a much, much smaller format. And I tell you right now that I don't know if this one is staying or not, but I am probably going to get rid of this and pick up Herbaceous Pocket Edition because it will give me the same gameplay experience, but in a much smaller package. Uh, this game is like four or five times the size of No Thanks and is giving me that level of gameplay in my, in my collection. I'd rather it have a similar box size and I'm happily to trade up or is it trade down? It's trade smaller, I don't know, but I'm happy to trade up or down or sideways, whatever it is, to get Herbaceous Pocket Edition. But that would be my only other thing I didn't like personally. 
As far as what I can see others not liking, well, first of all, the theme. Like I said, for me, the art I didn't like, but the theme actually works particularly well. But it's an interesting theme. It's a theme where you're potting plants. I mean, you're potting herbs into your various, uh, well, herb gardens. Uh, if you're not someone who's particularly into your own or herb garden, I just don't necessarily see this as being a universal theme in any typical sense. Uh, it didn't off put me from the game, but it certainly didn't draw me into the game. Uh, as far as the only other thing I could think of is what others might not like, it's meme. Like, for me, that's a plus. I like the fact that this game is mean. I like the fact that the, the, the set of decisions in front of you are fairly limited, but I like mean decisions in games. I like decisions in which it's really cutthroat, where I am trying to eke out a few more points than you, and so I have to make a decision that might be slightly subpar for my herb potting. It feels weird to say mean and herb potting, but either way, I might have to make a slightly subpar decision while in order to deny you the herbs you're looking for. And so while for me that's a plus, I can certainly see it being a, a con for others, especially when combined with the theme, which you wouldn't necessarily think of as a particularly mean-spirited theme. But it does work for me, but it can see, certainly be a problem for others. As far as my final thoughts on Herbaceous, it, it, it's an interesting one. So like I said already, I touched upon all the points to a degree. Like I said already, at three to four players, I enjoyed it and was unsure of where it would land. At two players, I particularly shined. I will note that when my wife played this game with me, Right after the game was done, she looked at me and said, please tell me you like it. Because she really enjoyed it from the get-go. Meaning, I, I don't know where I'd rank this. I haven't come up with an official formal ranking system for the channel. But however much I liked it, she liked it more. I think Herbaceous is an excellent game considering the playtime, the, the, the amount of rules there are. I think overall, considering the full package of what this game is offering, I think it does very well for the space it's trying to be in. Uh, like I said, the biggest thing for me, I want to get this in a smaller box, and Herbaceous Pocket Edition will do exactly that, even beating out no thanks in terms of uh, how small the game is. So for me, that will be a huge plus in terms of its ability to stay in my collection. I find very often with games, with games like No Thanks, with games like The Mind, The Game, any of these small box games, when they are literally sitting there in one of my giant Calyx cubes, all of them together, I tend to look at them less critically than I do other games because they are taking up less shelf space. They are easier to just reach in, grab, and just think of it as a, another another small box game that I'm happy to pull out when the mood suits. Uh, overall, I can hardly recommend Rare Herbaceous. I fully enjoyed my experience of it. If you like games like I mentioned, if you like No Thanks, if you like Welcome to the Dungeon, if you like any Push Your Luck game, if you like Colorado, if you like that style of game, I think Herbaceous is a game worth checking out. Until next time, I'm Alex Rackle from Board Game Co., and I hope you have a good one.